uh, Latin American countries regarding the whole ecosystem startups. So I'm going to talk a little about so switching gears back to public policy. So I'm going to talk a little about a public policy that is focusing on accelerating startups back in Brazil, which is called C. Um, so Jens uh, asked me to talk a little about the innovation and startup uh, uh, and entrepreneurship ecosystem back in Minas Gerais. But to begin with, I think it's really uh, interesting that even in a nutshell, we take a look at what, about what, what we were talking when we talk about Minas. Um, so Minas is the third largest or most important state in Brazil. Uh, it's a country within a country. So just out of curiosity, we are larger than France, we're larger than Spain. Um, we have 20 million people, more than Australia. Um, and we have the biggest or the largest number of municipalities in Brazil. So Brazil is divided into three different levels of government. Um, we have 5,679 municipalities, um, and 853 are in Minas. So it's a very challenging uh, uh, state to be managed. Um, and we are currently the third economy in Brazil. Our GDP is uh, it's bigger than Chile's, for for instance. So it's a very it's a very important engine in the um, in the economy of Brazil. So a lot of people don't really know about Minas, but I always say that after the World Cup, Germany made my life a lot easier because whenever I want to say where Belo is, I just say that's where we got massacred by Germany, seven to one. Uh, so it's it's always a, a, a good way to start a conversation, even though that doesn't bring a lot of good memories for us. Um, so Minas is located within the most important region of Brazil in terms of um, population as well as consumer market, right? So we are in the southeast region. Uh, we concentrate 42% of the population and 55% of the total uh, uh, GDP of the country. So we are among the three, as I said, richest states in the country, alongside with Sao Paulo and Rio. Um, so, um, and Minas is very known in Brazil as being kind of forward thinking in terms of public policy. Um, over the past 12 years or 15 years, we have develop, developed a good branding of being a very effective uh, state government. So we have investment grades from different agencies. We, we're considered the best public-private partnership uh, program in the world. Uh, we are members of the MIT Media Lab with whom we develop a lot of different uh, 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 initiatives. I'm going to talk to them about them in a little. Uh, and recently we've been uh, highlighted by Bloomberg as one of the innovation teams in governments in the world that are driving innovation on a global scale. So we really like to push forward uh, innovative uh, public policy. Um, and I don't know how much you know about how public policy making is hard. Um, but in Brazil, it's really hard. Um, it's, a, it's a decentralized model, but there's a lot of power concentration um, in a very few political parties. So it's really hard to bring everybody on board uh, if you want to drive this coalition government that we have uh, towards innovation and towards more innovative policy. Uh, I always say that to make very simple. Um, how many of you know how House of Cards? Right, so House of Cards is a very good uh, uh, picture of American, uh, 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 the American way of doing politics. How many of you know Game of Thrones? So Game of Thrones is the Brazilian version of, um, of House, House of Cards. Yeah, so that's how things are. You know, it's 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 very close helm and it's very hard to bring uh, new ideas to the table. But when you talk about entrepreneurship, it's, it's something that has come up in the past couple of years that is a new agenda and that the government had to adapt to it. So understanding the problem a little better, um, if we think of Brazil, um, Brazil is a huge country. A lot of people are very much interested in what's coming out of there. Um, but when we look at entrepreneurship rates in Brazil, uh, we're still behind most of the emerging countries in the world, such as Chile, as we are here, Colombia, China. So Brazil is still, uh, is still behind what we consider to be um, an adequate entrepreneurship rate for a country as big as we are. When we break it down to Minas, uh, we would see that the situation was even worse. So there was only 3% of entrepreneurial activity back in 2011, uh, which was dramatic. 
Um, and the motivations for being an entrepreneur in Minas were even more dramatic because people weren't being entrepreneurs because they saw opportunity. They were being entrepreneurs because they needed to. There was their only option for making a living. Um, and that's how we started to see that entrepreneurship could be a good driver to solve another problem, which is our economy. So Minas, very much like Chile, has a very concentrated economy, uh, just like Brazil. So Minas, in our current export, in our current uh, uh, export balance uh, nationwide, is what holds Brazil. So if Minas is concentrated like this, so here's how our exports are divided. Uh, and you can all check that in a platform that we developed with MIT Media Lab called Data Viva. You can check for the past uh, 15 years how Brazil is performing and how Minas and each municipality is performing in terms of exports and in terms of economic activity. So that's kind of uh, uh, dramatic when you think of how sustainable such model is in terms of uh, driving economy for, economy for the, the next couple of years. So given that, we also found out that even though government hadn't been looking around, there was something going on and there was something good going on regarding entrepreneurship and startups. So back in 2011, 2010, uh, there was this group of guys who just got together. They were working on different businesses, on different uh, 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 ideas for startups uh, in this neighborhood called São Pedro. It's a neighborhood in Belo Horizonte, which is, which is the capital of Minas Gerais. So it's a bunch of kids that just joined up. They were looking. They didn't have any space to work. There were no co-workings. There was nothing. So they just decided to join efforts and find, find a place to work together. Uh, and that's how the whole joke of San Pedro Valley started. So they met at a coffee shop and they said, hey, there are so many startups here. Maybe we're a valley, you know? Uh, but if we call ourselves San Pedro, nobody will know how to pronounce it. So let's call it San Pedro. Uh, so that's how all the jokes started. But now San Pedro is probably the most lively startup community in Brazil. Back in 2012, uh, Roy Carthy from uh, TechCrunch, he went to Brazil, uh, and he was like, oh, I want to assess how the entrepreneurial ecosystem is in, in Brazil. And he went there, and he was making a comparison between Brazil and, and, and Israel, and he said, okay, so Brazil has very good quality in startups. Um, but even though there's great quality, Brazil is lacking uh, what is a startup community for a country. So my advice would be that you found an epicenter for uh, an epicenter for, for the whole startup community in Brazil. And if I was to do that, I would do that in San Pedro Valley because that's where he found the best quality of entrepreneurs as well as community. So that's how the, the whole joke started. So we joined up with these guys uh, to design uh, something that was focusing on solving the economic problem that we were facing for the future as well as the biggest burden, which is we are very good at creating talent. We are not so good at retaining and attracting talent. So Minas has the best elementary school system in the country. Uh, we, we've been in that position for many, many years. Uh, we have five among the top 10 universities in Brazil, uh, most of them focusing on engineering, computer science, uh, mathematics, applied sciences. Um, we are the second largest software producer and publisher in the country. Uh, we have more than a third of the biotech companies in the country, uh, but we are very bad at that. And what explains that, and Renata is here, she's been working with that for many, many years uh, with universities, is that even though we produce a lot of good human capital, there's not enough entrepreneurial culture to boost those guys into becoming company owners or company founders or entrepreneurs in general. Uh, and to do that, of course, it's part of strengthening an ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, Brazil, in general, has a very recent innovation ecosystem. Uh, it's only about 20 years since uh, our NSFs or national or statewide started to really fund research and development in universities. So it's really, really recent. And even though we are now connected as a system, I might say, uh, it's still not working to focus on how we build that uh, uh, research into market products and services. So that's a key challenge that we were facing. So given that in mind, we started to design this new public policy that started in 2012, um, and it was really, really hard. Felipe must have told you guys uh, how recent this whole movement is in Brazil, uh, but it was even harder to explain to policymakers, legislatures, how important it would be for the future. 
Uh, and in, when we started designing Seed, uh, we had this very uh, bold vision of becoming one of the most important tech hubs uh, in Latin America, uh, given that Brazil plays such an important role in Latin America as a whole. Um, and to do that, we wanted to attract entrepreneurs. So we wanted both to develop our own and attract from other countries. Uh, and when we started saying that, uh, a lot of people thought we were crazy because even though Brazil is a big country, we are very close. Uh, I don't know how many of you ever tried to do business in Brazil or ever tried to get a visa to, to live in Brazil for a little, but it's really, really hard. So what we wanted to do is to low all the barriers for people to start a business, either foreigners or nationals. Uh, and that's the kind of legislature, legislation that we had to go through uh, in 2012. So while we were doing that, uh, we started to design a program that wasn't reinventing the wheel. It was actually getting a lot of pieces from other places that we thought were great and making them even greater. So it's an equity-free uh, seed, cap seed capital program. We, we have first-class uh, mentoring. We focus a lot, and Renata has told it uh, uh, already, on the entrepreneurial training part uh, because we do think that we need to form not only good businesses but good entrepreneurs, uh, people that are not necessarily thinking on the Silicon Valley man mindset but necessarily thinking on how they could work their businesses in a country like Brazil. So that involves a lot of hard skills and a lot of soft skills. So that's what we think could work in a country such as ours. Uh, and most importantly, um, we do see that given permanent visas or visas for people to stay long time in Brazil is a key part of our, uh, uh, of our uh, program that we run uh, every six months. So for every, every round and for every batch, we select uh, 40 startups from around the world. So it's a, it's a very international program uh, that have to be in Belo for six months, which is not so bad given that Belo is one of the greatest cities in Brazil to, to live and work. Um, startups of two to three entrepreneurs that get something around $35,000 to $40,000 uh, $40, uh, in seed capital free equity. So the acceleration program, um, it was, like I said, it's a very recent program and it took us by surprise when we opened the first batch uh, for submissions uh, and we had more than uh, 1,300 startups that applied from many, many countries, uh, 32 countries and almost uh, all the states in Brazil. Uh, the second, and, and it, was a very, uh, 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 it was a very diverse group that came to our, for this first batch. Uh, we had startups from um, many different countries such as Chile, Spain, Italy, uh, Uruguay, France, um, and many others from different uh, 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 states in Brazil. The second batch that is currently running, uh, we beat our own target in terms of submissions, so we had more than 1,400. Uh, uh, submissions from many countries and almost all the Brazilian states. Um, it's, a, uh, it's very interesting to see the movement of how diverse in terms of their businesses the startups are also getting. Uh, the first batch was very much focused on, on IT, uh, mobile technologies. Uh, the second batch we already have uh, biotech companies, uh, assisted technology companies, uh, healthcare companies. So the market is evolving and the program is being able to capture that as well. Um, so I think that one of, despite all these results that we think are very interesting to depict how much uh, the, program, the program has been effective, uh, one that I really like is this one, which is how we've been able to tap a lot of interested potential in the state to the topic of entrepreneurship. So more than accelerating the startups, which are very much focused because we do believe uh, in the, uh, the success factor as, uh, as a leverage for the ecosystem, uh, our main target is also to accelerate the ecosystem as a whole. So having more startups, having more people interested in startups, and turning all that talents into businesses. Um, so, but what have we learned so far from that? Um, like any other startups, we're very, very focused and we're very interested in metrics. Um, and we've been trying to understand uh, from the whole of those two batches, uh, what are the feelings of the entrepreneurs regarding their program, regarding our program and their future? Um, and we do see that um, 
access to investors and the active community that I told you before uh, is their best or their biggest interest in coming to seed or coming to Brazil, which is great because that's what we have. Um, however, we do see that after our seed round of money, uh, there is a very critical pathway for those startups. And only 22% of those thought that they could survive another year without another round of investment, which is very, very critical because that leads us to the dreadful valley of death, right? Um, and that's something that, for me, is Brazil's biggest challenge right now for startups. Uh, having seed capital, having uh, a structure or infrastructure for acceleration is not such a complex problem to solve right now. Uh, the biggest problem is actually this valley of death after the first rounds of cash. And to try to strengthen that, we need funding. Uh, so uh, I think we got a lot of our things together, but we definitely need more funding. And to do that, uh, even though government is an important driver uh, uh, of our economy in the way that it is in Brazil, uh, we cannot do it alone. So we are looking for partners uh, to come join us in such effort because we do see that we have great opportunity both in terms of market as well as startups. So this is what we are most focused on. Here's just an example of something that we are doing, which is we are creating, so the Development Bank of Minas, which is kind of our Beni Des, uh, has joined up with Microsoft Ventures and Banco Espirito Santo in a soon-to-be-launched fund uh, 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 focused on that specific uh, stage of the Death Valley that we're talking. It's, let's say it's an angel fund focused on that specific stage uh, that we're looking after. Uh, so uh, another good news is that what was first a, 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 a two-year visa now became a permanent visa for, for foreigners uh, because we do see the value of having those guys staying in Brazil. For, for, so for all the, the startups uh, that were accelerated in, at seed, they all were granted permanent visas after uh, they finished their acceleration process of six months. Uh, and we were very, very glad with that. Um, and like I said, it's still too soon to see how big is the impact in the ecosystem. Uh, but we are little by little trying to monitor and evaluate not only the startups, which Renata and uh, Wilinka, uh, Elimar is also here. Uh, they are on the day-to-day -day basis dealing with that uh, uh, development of the startups. But we as government, we're very much interested in measuring, okay, so what's the return of investment of all this that we've been doing? Uh, and we do, we do think that by the end of this year, we're going to have some interesting metrics on how we should be designing the future of seed. Um, and since I mentioned something about uh, football in the beginning, I'm going to end up with some football as well. So um, what's next for the future of seed? Um, so we have the second demo day. Uh, that is coming up on the 13th of uh, November. Uh, we're planning to have more than 100 startups uh, at this second event. The first event was in May, May, June, yeah. Uh, and it was, it was absolutely interesting from my perspective. Um, and this guy, uh, he's a, a correspondent from Forbes mag magazine in Brazil. And we invited him for, for this demo day. And he was like, it was in the middle or very close to the beginning of the World Cup. And he wrote this article to s telling his impressions about uh, the ecosystem in Brazil. And he was very impressed uh, with the quality of startups and the quality of uh, the interaction and the community that we're building there. So he came up with this uh, very interesting article, if you want to read, in which he claims that entrepreneurs and not soccer players will be responsible for the future of Brazil, which I do agree. Uh, and that's why we are planning a third batch uh, for November, maybe, yeah? Uh, let's say November after the election turmoil in Brazil, uh, but we are very, yeah, but we are very uh, determined to do that. Um, and with that, I finish my presentation. So, with me here, I have Renata, who has spoken in two different uh, panels before, and Elimar, who is uh, our partner in crime, uh, uh, because Seed is a government program, but it's co-run uh, uh, by uh, Wilinka which is a, a, a private institution, not-for-profit not institution, uh, that is focusing on strengthening the innovation and, and startup ecosystem in Brazil as a whole. So we are, we are in, we are in that very good company, uh, and so will you guys be, if you decide to come to Minas, to get to know a little better of what we have to offer you. So thank you so much.
Any questions? Hello. Well, great presentation. Um, I was just wondering, one of your slides said something about uh, soft landing. So um, you're yeah. targeting entrepreneurs, um, what stage actually? So it's soft landing, maybe it's a you know, more developed, more mature venture. I was wondering okay. if you could talk about that. So um, this is something that, so Seed is a program that was, it's, it's completely by design, let's say. And, 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 and over the months, it, it's been changing by design as well. So it was, it was initially focused on very early stage startups. Uh, but what we started to see was that, okay, so startups that didn't consider themselves as, as early stage as we considered uh, were also very interested in the program. So soft landing uh, works on both ends. So it's also, uh, it, 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 in one hand, it's for uh, foreign startups or from other states in Brazil that want to come to Minas. And in, in that regard, we give, we give a lot of uh, support. Uh, with visa, bank accounts, and uh, any certifications they need to be operating uh, uh, up and running, uh, as well as soft landing for foreign companies that want to start uh, targeting the Brazilian market, uh, so in commercial means as well. So um, it's, it, it's a very diverse group of startups, so we have both early stage and, and, and better developed ones, uh, but we do see that soft landing is something that uh, is key for them to enjoy the most their six months there. So it's something that uh, the soft landing program uh, and, and the, the whole hosting process is something that we focus very, very intensively. Hi. Hi. Um, I have two questions. Sure. First, um, how many startups do, do you guys accept for each batch? Is there a quota? And the second question is, what type of startups do you actually look for? Is it specifically those that might help the local community or simply those that might continue to have a presence um, in Minas? Okay, so, uh, so for each batch we, we accept 40. Um, and um, we, we are looking for startups with good people actually. Um, if, you, if you look at our evaluation criteria, um, the biggest chunk of our evaluation is focused on the team. Uh, because I think it was Craig that said you can change a product given a certain uh, situation, but you cannot change people. So we do believe in that. Um, different sectors, so we're not very focused on any particular sector. Uh, we're actually discussing something for the third batch, which is having call for proposals or requests for startups uh, in specific sectors that we do see as a uh, prominent future uh, uh, in Minas, uh, but also companies that will have an impact on the ecosystem. So we do like people that are, that are troublemakers in a good way, uh, whoever they come from, or whenever they, wherever they come from, uh, but that we see that are active members of their own community of startups because we do see a lot of value in connecting those ecosystems as well. So uh, we are currently having uh, something which is really interesting. Uh, so there's a, a, a company from the first uh, batch, which is Construct, uh, from two American guys that is having a syndication for, for uh, uh, investment with a second batch startup, which is Fundacity, that came from Chile and that connect me, connected me with Jens. So it's, 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 it's that kind of guy uh, that we're looking after. People that will have both uh, a business, uh, 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 a good business proposal, as well as an impact on the ecosystem. And that, that comes all to the team, I think. Great. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you so much.